Greetings Earthlings, I'm back with another large diaphragm condenser mic review for you guys. So today I'm reviewing this guy, the Audio-Technica AT4040, and my buddy Travis from Podcast Mike and I have been talking about this mic for a while, so we decided to drop our reviews on the same day. So if you are interested in hearing somebody else's voice or somebody else's opinion of this microphone, I'll go ahead and throw a link to his review in the description down below. Also, if you want to pick up one of these microphones for yourself, it will set you back around $300, and like always, I'll throw some links in the description down below. And for this review, I have the mic connected directly directly to the 2i2 second gen with 48 volts on and my gain set at around 35 or 40 percent. I'm not going to do any compression or any EQ but I will have to boost it in post to make it a decent level so check the doobly-doo for that information. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. First off everything comes in this really nice storage box. You're obviously going to get the microphone. You get this really great looking shock mount. You're gonna get a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. You're gonna get this dust cover. And of course, you're gonna get some documentation. As far as the build quality, as you would expect with any $300 microphone, this thing feels excellent. And on top of that, it is just gorgeous. As you can see, it's got this awesome looking matte black finish and this really classy looking logo right there on the front. It also has an all metal body as well as a metal grill, but there's not much in there to protect the microphone from plosives. So you may wanna pick up a pop filter as well. On the back of the microphone, you will find two switches, the first one being a high pass filter, which rolls off frequency starting at around 80 hertz at 12 decibels per octave, as well as a negative 10 decibel pad in case you're recording loud sound sources. When we get to the specs, we got a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a max SPL of 145 or 155 decibels, depending on the pad setting, an impedance of 100 ohms, and a sensitivity of negative 32 decibels. So currently, I'm at about three inches away from the microphone, and I am in the flat mode, and this is how the microphone sounds. I'm still at three inches away, but now I've initialized the high pass filter, which rolls off frequencies at around 80 hertz, and this is how the microphone sounds. Now I'm spinning around the microphone to see what the actual polar pattern is, what the off axis coloration is, and how my voice changes as we move around the microphone's capsule. I also recently received a comment requesting that I test out microphones with a pop filter. So right here I have the Stedman Pro Screen 101 and I am talking just a couple inches away from the microphone and this is how the microphone is sounding. Now I'm banging on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to see what kind of proximity effect we can get out of this thing. Now I'm about a foot away from the AT4040, about two feet away from the 4040, and about four feet away from the microphone. <laughs> I'm becoming more of a thick boy because I love pizza so much. So out of all the Audio-Technica condenser microphones that I've reviewed so far, this is hands down my favorite. In terms of pros, this thing has a very smooth sounding frequency response, particularly in the lower frequencies. The boost to the presence and air frequencies just open this microphone up and make it sound live. The built-in high-pass filter is really nice to have as it helps curb boominess or rumble. And lastly, it has a great build quality and you're getting a really rad shock mount with it as well. But then in terms of cons, if you do get too close to this microphone, the proximity effect can get very out of hand, although that's why they do have the high-pass filter on there. And also, at certain times, the presence boost did seem to accentuate some sibilance, but at this point, I am just being very picky of the microphone. There's not much that I don't like about it. So when it comes to the overall sound, on the electric guitar, I think this microphone sounded great, although it was on the edge of being boomy. Even when I switched on the high-pass filter in my tests, it was still a little bit boomy, so you may need to roll off some frequencies in your DAW as well. On the acoustic guitar, I thought the air boost made the guitar shine, and the presence boost made the acoustic sound really punchy and aggressive, which was a really nice mix. And then on singing vocals, I thought this thing sounded really nice and full in the lows and mids, and vibrant and alive in the higher frequencies. So would I recommend this thing? Absolutely, especially if you're upgrading from an entry-level condenser microphone. I think by picking this up, you'll really notice an improvement 
improvement in your lows and your low mids, as well as this really nice boost to your higher frequencies without any harsh sound to it. All right, guys, I guess that's going to do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. Want to influence the gear that I review next? Geeksrising.com slash podcastage. Want more videos like this? Logo beneath me. Check out the Discord server. Link in the description. And I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.